Hi everyone, our subject today is fatigue, tiredness, or weakness in pediatrics. Basics. Everyone experiences fatigue, but recovery is rapid following a rest or good sleep. Most children disease, childhood disease, particularly infections, cause fatigue, which may last for many days and sometimes weeks. Chronic fatigue syndrome, CFS, is defined as an unexplained, persistent, and overwhelming tiredness, weakness, or exhaustion, causing disturption of daily life and resulting in a decrease of physical and or mental work and relief by sleep. The condition typically exacerbates with the exercise or physical activity. A minimum of three months is required before diagnosis is made. CFS is rare before the age of 10 years. Fatigue involves extreme and unusual tiredness, decreased physical performance, and an excessive need for rest. It's often accompanied by feeling of sleepiness, weariness, irritability, lassitude, boredom, and decreased efficiency. Weakness, in contrast, refers to diminished body or muscle strength, either the inability to generate force or maintaining force, stamina, or both. True weakness can be identified only by demonstration of abnormal neurological or muscular function based on history, physical examination, or laboratory techniques. Practically speaking, a history of weakness on further questioning will often suggest hypotonia in infants and will be expressed in older children as a trouble running or keeping up in gym class, clumsiness, or lack of agility. Possible diagnosis in infant common cause chronic respiratory disease, cardiac disease, drugs like antiepileptic, or steroid, neuromuscular disease, a chronic infection, inflammation. In children, common causes chronic fatigue syndrome, post-viral fatigue, drugs like antihistamine, antiepileptic, psychiatric illness like depression and anxiety disorder, trauma, post-traumatic stress, child abuse. Other causes in infant, malnutrition, chronic uh, inflammation, anemia, botulism, malignancy, obstructive sleep apnea, hypokalemia. Other causes in children, autoimmune disease, for example, uh, juvenile idiopathic arthritis, neuromuscular disease, myasthenia gravis, obstructive sleep apnea, chronic infectious inflammatory disease, malnutrition, chronic anemia, endocrine disorder, Edison, hypothyroids, malignancy, lymphoma, neuroblastoma, fibromyalgia, inflammatory bowel disease like Crohn's disease, HIV infection, hypokalemia. Differential diagnosis of weakness and hypotonia, Down syndrome, spinal muscular atrophy, muscular dystrophy, congenital hypothyroidism, uh, botulism, myasthenia gravis, Guillain-Barre syndrome, juvenile dermatomyositis, and poliomyelitis. See previous lecture of weakness, hypotonia, in adolescent, common causes, mycoplasma and other viral pneumonia, infectious mononucleosis, hepatitis, juvenile idiopathic arthritis, SLE, diabetes mellitus, malignancy, inflammatory bowel disease, Addison disease, drug abuse, alcohol, chronic inflammatory, uh, chronic pulmonary disease, juvenile primary fibromyalgia, obstructive sleep apnea, necrolepsy, depression, severe obesity, how to differentiate between uh, some of the differential diagnoses? Uh, in chronic fatigue syndrome, there is a possibility preceded by viral infection. There is fatigue as at the main symptom, symptom longer than three months, and possible normal uh, physical examination. In post-viral, also there is uh, preceded by viral infection. Fatigue is the main symptom and possible relief by uh, rest and the possible normal examination. In cases of drug ingestion, there is a rest uh, relieve the fatigue and possible normal examination. In cases of psychiatric and trauma, there is possible relief after uh, rest and uh, normal physical examination. Recommended investigation. 
urine for for renal abnormalities, for example, a chronic renal failure and tubular acidosis. Complete blood count for chronic anemia and infection, white BC count for infection. Electrolyte in renal failure and hypokalemia, urea in renal failure and hypokalemia. Liver function test for chronic infection, jaundice, anemia. Thyroid function test to confirm hypothyroidism. Cortisol level for suspected Addison disease. Creatinine phosphokinase for suspected muscle disease. Serology for celiac disease, toxoplasmosis, Lyme disease, serological or polymerase chain reaction study for cytomegalovirus, Bistampi virus, Toxoplasma gondii, IgM for Toxoplasma, Bistampi virus, cytomegalovirus, viral test for Bistampi virus, IgM and IgG, Mantox test for suspected tuberculosis, chest X-ray for suspected lymphoma. Top tips. Chronic fatigue syndrome should be differentiated from post-viral fatigue. The latter is shorter duration. A history of viral infection at onset and laboratory evidence support the diagnosis of post-viral fatigue. Children with autoimmune disease like JIA or SLA commonly suffer from fatigue for months and years even after the disease has settled. Childhood trauma causes sometimes a long-term fatigue. Trauma is defined as exposure to actual or uh, threatening death, serious injury, or sexual violence. This includes experience a direct trauma, witnessing it, or learning about it. While fibromyalgia is characterized by widespread musculoskeletal pain, generalized or localized, joint tenderness, and to a lesser extent, fatigue, in chronic fatigue syndrome, the fatigue is a prominent overshadowing other symptom. In myasthenia gravis, the fatigue is characteristically late in the day or after exercise. Tosis is typical presentation. Chronic fatigue syndrome can be an extremely isolating illness. Establishing contact with the support group can be very helpful for overcoming isolation and providing contact with the similar age patient. A child is best managed in the chronic fatigue syndrome syndrome centers, which are led by CFS specialists. Red flag. Diagnosis of CFS should not be made in patients with a prior history of depression or psychiatric disorder such as schizophrenia. Patients with the chronic fatigue syndrome have often sleep disturbance. A good history of sleep pattern is essential. Be aware that one of the most common and dis the distressing side effect of cancer treatment is fatigue, occurring in about 99% uh, of cases. Aerobic exercise, physical activity, and yoga are beneficial. Do not prescribe psychostimulant. Childhood trauma that includes sexual violence and maltreatment, physical, emotional, and neglect has detrimental effects on cognitive and brain development of the child. Only 22% of child, uh, children who had been abused or neglected achieved healthy adult functioning. Recurrent or chronic infection is the most common problem associated with fatigue in children. Otitis media, sinusitis, tonsillitis, among which fatigue is prominent, often mistakenly considered insufficient. Upper respiratory tract allergies may cause impressive fatigue, irritability, and mild depression. In addition, prolonged viral and parasitic illness like infectious mononucleosis, hepatitis, cytomegalovirus infection, toxoplasmosis, commonly produce fatigue, especially in adolescent. Endocrine disorder. Of the common endocrine disorder, only hypothyroidism is likely to be associated with fatigue. Certainly, a child with the hypothyroidism whose rate of growth has fallen off may exhibit increasing fatigue and lassitude, at first subtle as the only symptom. 
Thyrotoxicosis, in contrast, is uncommon in young children but occasionally produce isolated fatigue in adolescents. The possibility of Addison disease should be considered in children or adolescents who have unexplained fatigue and associated weakness, anorexia, nausea, vomiting, or weight loss. Diabetes mellitus, although any metabolic disorder can cause fatigue, only diabetes mellitus occur with the enough frequency to merit consideration. Fatigue almost always accompany the initial or uncontrolled diabetes status. Inflammatory disease. Inflammatory disease, especially juvenile idiopathic arthritis and other rheumatological disorder, appear frequently in pediatric practice and many children have significant fatigue out of proportion to their musculoskeletal complaint. Lyme arthritis is a notable example. Pulmonary disease, cyanotic heart disease, and the chronic advanced pulmonary disease, as seen with cystic fibrosis, are commonly associated with market fatigue. In these cases, however, the underlying disease is usually readily evident before the fatigue becomes severe. The pediatrician may occasionally see an older child for the first time who has severe fatigue caused by previously undiagnosed hypoxic disorder. Anemia. Although fatigue is often ascribed to mild or moderate anemia from whatever source, symptoms are usually not seen in children until the hemoglobin level falls to 6 or 7 grams per deciliter. If RBC count decreases gradually, then even lower hemoglobin level may ensue without clinically evident symptoms. Irritability and attention problems may be present with mild to moderate iron deficiency anemia, but fatigue is usually not a common feature. Younger, younger children especially seem to tolerate incredibly low hemoglobin level with no symptom at all. Malignancy, particularly leukemia or lymphoma, occasionally develops insidiously with fatigue as the major symptom. Although always feared, these diseases are seen infrequently in pediatric office practice. Infectious mononucleosis, the symptom of infectious mononucleosis usually resolved in several weeks, but an occasional patient may have an atypical or a more prolonged course in which the initial clinical finding either persists or are intermittent over a period of months or, in rare cases, years. These unusual but documented cases of chronic infectious mononucleosis typically include complaint of chronic fatigue. Chronic fatigue syndrome, which most commonly involve persistent or relapsing severe fatigue, fever, headache, sore throat, tender lymphadenitis, nausea or vomiting, myalgia, arthralgia, and abdominal pain. Neurocognitive complaints such as inability to concentrate, sleep disturbance, episodic confusion and memory problems, depression, anxiety, and irritability are also especially common in chronic fatigue syndrome. The syndrome was initially attributed to infection with the Epstein-Barr virus, although a few patients had documented physical findings or hematological abnormalities consistent with the diagnosis of the infectious mononucleosis. The prognosis for pediatric patients with the chronic fatigue syndrome is better than that for adults, although symptoms may persist for months or several years most children and adolescents with the chronic fatigue syndrome have a good outcome with the approximately one half reporting complete recovery. Emotional disorder. Many children who come to the pediatrician with the unexplained chronic fatigue are found to have an emotionally related disorder. The complaint usually centers on a parent's concern about a child's reduced activity level. A younger child will be noted to prefer sedentary activity, to lie around the house a lot, appear tired, lack energy, 
and shrinking from social contact. This triad may have been long standing, but a comment from grandparents or a teacher may arouse parental anxiety, precipitating the first visit to the pediatrician. At this point, the family is often convinced that the child has a serious organic disease. Further evaluation, however, usually reveals that the child is prefer performing very satisfactorily, but not up to the family's excessive expectation. The child may be withdrawing because of failure to compete with an exceptional sibling or because of real or imagined fail failure in school. On the other cases, a child may feel a lack of well-being because of parental dis uh, discord. Similarly, lack of parental involvement with a child may lead to lassitude and boredom. Stress and anxiety in children often result in either hyperactivity or withdrawal, and the more common withdrawal reaction may express itself as chronic fatigue. Most children experience transient period of lassitude or fatigue, but such instances are brief and usually self-limited. At the opposite extreme is the child whose chronic fatigue is a sign of a true psychiatric depression. In this case, as an adolescent, the more protracted the severe the period of withdrawal, the more likely that depression and fatigue are caused by pathological process. Other condition, always unpredictable and often insidious in its onset, inflammatory bowel disease may arouse concern initially with unexplained fatigue and loss of sense of well-being, although eventually accompanied by fever, abdominal symptom, or abnormal stool, this disorder can continue for months with fatigue as the only major symptom. Of more current importance in older children and adolescents are alcoholism and drug abuse, causes of chronic fatigue that are easily overlooked. Thank you for your listening.